Welcome to Fable Hunters. I'm Yanji. I'm Saint. And today we're gonna open some stuff. Yes, we are. Uh, last time I chose box three, so I already jacked the uh, magical box. Yeah, I'm gonna go with box, uh, this is box one. One or two, I, d I don't remember. All right, let's go with box uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We had a Genji topic last time. Now I I'm gonna go with the topic because I think it's appropriate for uh, what's been happening recently, these prior, well, prior year. Let's call it more like eight months, right, Genji? Since uh, Monarch? Yeah. So the saying goes on Wall Street, bulls make money, bears make money, pigs get slaughtered. And it's a really old saying. It's kind of grim. Well, it's not just grim, it's, it, it makes sense because it depends, like these animals actually mean something. Like yeah. a bull market means that the market's going up and you're speculating on future growth. Bear market means you're very negative and you're speculating on losses or decline, uh -huh. right? The pigs, those are the guys that aren't bulls or bears. They're just pigs. Pigs are hungry, pigs are stupid. They're just here just to eat and they're showing up just to eat. I'd say bulls are courageous. They're, you know, they got their horns up. Sorry to interrupt you. All good. Yeah, that's something we gotta sleeve up. That's a great first pack. EA, first pack. Yeah, foil. So yeah, pigs are stupid animals that are just greedy and they'll eat as much. Like pigs will probably eat themselves to death, gorge themselves to death. Whereas bulls are brave, bulls are big, bulls are aggressive. They'll put their horns down and charge forward, you know, fearlessly, because that's, that's how bulls do. Bears, I don't really know the animal analogy of bears, but they growl, they're always in uh, crappy moods. The bears are always very negative and they, they expect the market to drop. Yeah. And the whole idea about, you know, bulls making money and bears making money in the stock market is that uh, when you're picking a stock, when you're in investing or taking a position, uh, no matter how many units you get, you, you go in and you say, hey, um, I actually believe in this position. I have conviction in my thesis. I have conviction in my whole thought process. And because you have conviction, you have belief in yourself or you have belief in history or belief in whatever data you're going off of. You stick with your conviction and then you just move forward. Is that a, there you go. And you just move forward based on your your thesis based on your conviction. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're like, oh, you know, a company like Tesla is gonna go up you know, the bulls, they invest in Tesla, they wait until it goes up, and then they're fine, uh, you know, and they make money and then they exit whenever they think it's, you know, a good exit point. And then the bears, same thing. They're like, oh, Tesla's gonna go down. Tesla's not a great company. Tesla didn't have really good earnings. It's gonna drop. Yeah. And then they short the stock, so they, they you know, bet on it going down and they make money when it goes down. And they say, ha, 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 you know, we won. And, um, and then they, they, cut their position after a certain point, after they take their profits. Now, um, in the stock market, like for example, in 2001, where there was the Enron collapse, there were pigs coming in saying, oh, look at all this money everybody else is making. Let me jump on in and take a position. By then, the actual people that knew what was going on with the market, they'd already cashed out and they were playing with house money. And um, is that, that's not, a, that's not a foil, right? No. no. They're playing with house money. Yeah. And then the bears had locked in their positions and they were accumulating towards the end of that upward surge. And then that's when the pigs came in like, look, uh, you know, my neighbor, my, you know, my neighbor just made a million dollars. The cab driver just made a million dollars. Let me, let me throw in some, you know, some of my investment and take a position in all these oh, wait, different dot com up. companies. Yeah, that was subtle, right? I was like, wasn't there something shiny? I thought you just said something, but yeah, that's cool. That's our cold foil. So in those times, same thing. The pigs, they came in at the end and they were just greedy. There was no thesis. There was no actual thought process. There was just greed and mm -hmm. they got killed. There's no entry point. There's no exit strategy. And it was just, you know, a recipe for a disaster. So same thing happened in 2008. You know, people were uh, there was a subprime mortgage crisis with homes and whatnot. Yeah. And people going upside down on homes, speculating on real estate. They're like, oh, look, you know, even my hairdresser owns three properties. And meanwhile, they're getting um, burdened, overburdened, over leveraged from debt. And when you heard of people that had no business owning two or three or four properties, historically speaking, 
then you knew something was up. By then, I'd, I'd already made enough mistakes, uh, even being in my mid-20s, mid to late 20s, that I was like, you know what, this is too good to be true. I'm not, you know, leaving myself to any exposure. Yeah. And, I mean, that that took experience. I, I also remember the, uh, the Reagan era, where I think there was also a housing crisis in the 80s, like 87, mm-hmm. and there's a drop. Bulls made made money. Bears also made money. And again, like I said, the pigs got slaughtered because the pigs are always the last group of folks to get in on something. You know, they they read Money Magazine. They didn't even read the Financial Times. They heard from a friend of a friend that somebody is making money and they said, let's let's get into this. Let's also profit off of this. I think the main key is you can like do something that other people are doing as well. Yep. But it's like how you get there, right? Like, Absolutely. like if you just get there because... You just want you. You didn't like put any thought. Hey, oh, another Reckon's eighth player. vein, yeah. I, I was saying if, if you the, if you get there be, because you like you didn't put any thought or like work into it, and mm-hmm. you're just like taking like the easy way. You're just like, oh, other people did this, so it must yeah. be easy. Absolutely, and I mean to to tie it all around to this game. Yeah, like what what happened in December or what happened October November of 2020 when I saw this game, I was like wow, this is going to be a really good game. Yeah. After a lot of people get their hands on this game, people are going to play this game. And you know what? In 20 or 30 years, when it comes time to hang it up and not work anymore and you know pass something on to my family next to kin, mm-hmm. etc., like, this is something I think that they'll be happy to have because, heck, if I had an uncle or if my, my dad had got into Magic the Gathering and passed on a whole bunch of alpha or beta product to me. I, I, I mean, I, I love my late father, but I would have been really, really thankful. So I'm thinking ahead and like, hey, look, this is the collectible of our generation, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Like, do I think Kamigawa Neon is going to, you know, go up 10x from where it is now in 2040? Absolutely not. I'd lay odds against that happening. Real, real long shot. Do I think Welcome to Wraith Alpha is going to do well? Well, you know what? I thought that in 2020 and so far, I think it's up about 7x of whatever I, you know, whatever I entered at. Yeah. And that isn't even, you know, I'm, I'm a bull. That's not even me meeting my thesis. My thesis is the exit strategies in 2040 or 2050 when I'm going to get out. Now, the bears, bears have been right. A lot of bears were like, oh, this game's a sham, you know. Monarch, Nobody it's going to go game. down. Nobody plays this game. Oh, Icelander. Rainbow Fire. Heck, Yeah. That's really cool. She's pretty fun to play, I think. Oh, really? And, uh, Blitz. Okay. It's just like a very different like way to play Wizard. It's actually more similar to like playing like Control, or, like Control deck and Magic. Because, really? Like, you just like you put like a little like annoying like spell in your arsenal, mm-hmm. and then you can like play on your opponent's turn to freeze them up and disrupt how many. Yeah, or or like they they come at you and then you hit them with like with damage that they weren't expecting. Yep, yep. I could see that. I'm just, I'm just not, not, I'm not built to uh, be a disruptive wizard player just yet. I just want to, you know, stick them with the pointy end still. (laughs) Either that or the the prism build with the auras, it's going to be interesting. That's my type of control, just sit back and see what happens. Just make make the stuffs. Yeah. But uh, going back to what I was saying to kind of, kind of tie things up, it's like, I saw an opportunity yeah. in flesh and blood and I took it because I believed in the game. I didn't care what it cost me at the time. And the true bulls of the game, they're probably of the same mindset. They're like, this is gonna be a really, really, really good game. And there's not very much of it. And we had come to that conclusion before the first print run numbers came out, I would say, mm-hmm. right? Cause print run numbers came out in March of 2021. Like think March, yeah, like right 20s. before Monarch came out. Yeah, like, like six weeks before Monarch came out. Yeah. And then, hey, those are the bulls. The bears were like, oh, this is all BS. You know, you're going to lose money. Like the Monarch, like, it, like the when, Monarch when, bears, when Monarch was at When its Monarch peak. was at its peak, yep. And also when Monarch was at its peak and when um, these were coming, you know, uh, Tales of Ari was coming out as well. Yeah. That's when you had the pigs come in late. Like, oh, everybody already made so much money, but... Oh, I, uh, there's still time left in the wave. There's still an opportunity to get in, you know, Monarch to 1K, right? And that just created a huge glut. And 
a bunch of fake demand, just like the people buying Pokemon or just like the people currently speculating on some magic products and secret layers. Yeah. Just like everywhere. You could see these examples all over the place. There's a whole other TCG that's built around FOMO. You know what I mean? So, I wonder which TCG. Yeah, I wonder which TCG. Let's not even proactively mention it because yeah. it's not worth mentioning on camera. But that said, bulls will make money. Yeah. Bears will make money. Yep. And pigs, they've been getting slaughtered for the past eight to ten months, right? So, yeah, take that for what it's worth. Hope you guys learned something today. And, oh, oops, let's go through the, the polls. This is a thin box, right? We went from the Bravo box, the Starvo box, to... I, I would say that it's this is like like an average box. Actually, probably above average. Because it, really? you got the Kraken's Aether Vein. Yeah, I mean, like... Uh, Six Majestics. Not, I, none of the really good ones, right? I would say, like, an average box is, like, two, like, little potions... Okay. Uh, and then you get like one extended one art. One extended art, one Icelander. So we I, got. I think this is like one, a one talisman. Pretty decent box. Right? One antiquity yep. piece right there. And then the strong antiquities weapon. I don't even know if this is playable, but this it looks cool. card, as soon as they print something that lets you buff the damage on it, yeah. it's going to be ridiculous. You think so? But just read it. Yeah. One every turn. So you could. No, draw a card for every arcane damage you dealt. Oh, that's the... Right now, oh, there's okay. no way to buff it. Okay. But as soon as they make a way to buff it, dude, this card is crazy. So you're saying you could, like, pitch a blue to draw again, you could, you could, pitch like, another blue to draw no, no, again. No, no, but I'm saying, like, if you can do, like, let's say you can do, like, four damage with it. Two or three or four. Anything more you, than one, If you do right? four, you pitch a blue, you do four, you draw four. Okay. That is pretty sick. Yeah. Right? But it's just, like, this. this is a card that is just, like, waiting to get broken. I think. This is like the LED of our time. The Lion's Eye Diamond. Yeah, Lion's Eye Diamond was definitely just like, like completely it was like overlooked. It's yeah. like this card sucks. This, this is garbage. 25 cent uh, bulk bins back yeah, in the Yeah, they thought it was like a chess card probably. And then this is a draw engine. I don't I don't see it that way, but I'm like, you're you're a real player. You could see that. Yeah, yeah. Right? So above average box, according to Yanji. Mm -hmm. It was not like our original uh, first Starvo box, but still pretty cool to open pretty cool to chat and uh like i said hope you guys learned something today remember to uh like comment subscribe twiddle the notification button and we'll see you on the next one bye, bye.